It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across the USA and wherever Elon Musk sends a spaceship, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. You know, I think, everywhere. I think this is my first attempt, really, to troll. Yeah. I don't think I've ever yeah. tried to troll before. Well, the thing is, is that it's not 100% trolling. No, it really isn't. No, you're right. It's not. Okay. There's a little bit of trolling. Yeah, there's some. But, yeah. but uh, it's uh, a very, I think, valid talking point. No, and it I'd is. I say that because, you know, we take all the credit for it, but... And also because it's true. Well, I, I finished it. Here it is, okay? All right. All right, here's... Uh, Donald Trump has united the nation. Even Kamala Harris now agrees with the pro-Trump MAGA agenda. Donald Trump is pro-fracking. Harris campaign agrees. Donald Trump is pro-secure border. Harris campaign agrees. Donald Trump wants no taxes on tip. Harris campaign agrees. Kamala Harris has embraced the major unifying issues of the pro-Trump MAGA movement. Congrats to Kamala and all the Democrats. Donald Trump, the great uniter. Boom. Part of that is trolling. It's (laughs) It's a little bit trolling. It's a little bit. It's just No, but it gets back to the point that that, uh, just in, because we we always talk about messaging correctly, and we had talked about it earlier because we sort of came upon this organically. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You can turn this thing around. Because nobody yeah. believes that Kamala Harris has really changed. No. So what Trump can do is throw it right back in her face saying, congratulations on becoming uh, pro, you know, I'm becoming part of the MAGA movement. Well, I think it's wrong that we don't take her campaign for its word. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was just wrong of me to do that. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. Uh so at uh, Gary Red Eye One and did you uh Yeah, and I re- it? I uh, okay. reposted it. It's uh at Eric Harley. Right. Okay. Yeah. And just uh we never push to like retweet this Send is, this out. Th- this is the one exception Put this to the rule. Out. It has to go. It has to go. Right. It has to go. And and we want the campaign to to take it and and run with it. Well, no, I I, I seriously, even I want, if we don't get credit for it, I want them to oh, run with care. this. Yeah, I could care less. Somebody wants. <laughs> Look, if I'm not getting paid, I really don't care any, about anything else. <laughs> I, I've 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 had a few people come to me and 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 I know you've had it too, saying. You know, I take stuff from your show and I use it. And it's like, yeah. And I didn't give you credit. I'm like, I could care less. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's, I could that's care fine. less. That's fine. Hate- if if you're using the idea, if I believe in that idea and that idea uh, is being repeated and and conveyed by other people, yeah. that's all the satisfaction I need. You know, I mean, if you're not going to pay me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I don't. Care. So I don't care about the credit. No, yeah. but we, we were just saying it's a great. You know that you you're always looking for those little things in a campaign that go boom. Right. And I think this yeah. one, congratulations, Trump out there, congratulations on the Kamala Harris campaign for embracing the pro-Trump MAGA movement. Uh, and and just, li- I only listed three of the issues. Right. Uh, but there are more that yeah. she has changed on. Yep. But just for, you know, being expedient, brevity, whatever, mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. wanted to, you know, get, get that up. But there's more that you can, you know, take from where she has flip-flopped or where the campaign mm-hmm. is flip-flop which mm-hmm. is why i put campaign right because if i don't put campaign well kamala didn't say her campaign did well there's no difference mm-hmm. uh but uh we've just said yeah trump and all the surrogates should be out there everywhere going the uh kamala harris is now maga yep this is what trump has been trump even convinced harris and the democrats agree because no democrats are complaining the Democratic voters are all now MAGA. Yeah. Because they agree. Now, the interesting thing is we can actually back this up with the opinions of Douglas Schoen and Roy Teixeira from about two months ago 
where about at the same time they were writing editorials talking about the fact that the Biden campaign needs to be pro-MAGA. So we can actually relate to those two articles back then that talk about talked about even Biden should even be discussing a wall. wall. Mm-hmm. Well, Harris simply said, okay, I'm going to become MAGA. Yep. That's what it that's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know? Um I love this one. Just I'm just happy to be on somebody just posted. Love how you correctly message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, it's just <laughs> uh, Joseph writes, Americans are coming together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Americans are, Americans are coming together because of Donald Trump. Exactly. But there is truth to that. Yeah. Because the message is Kamala Harris, no, she can't win. She can't sell the other stuff. Right. She can't sell the other stuff. Sell she, what's winning. What what she can sell is the Trump and Republican message. That's what people, the Democrats believe, will buy. That's why they're lying about everything. They actually don't believe in any of this. Right. But they're selling it to Democrats, and Democrats aren't complaining. And that's why I include every Democrat voter out there. If you don't get upset at Kamala Harris, then you are pro MAGA. You Come. have embraced the MAGA agenda. How does it feel? Does it feel liberating? Kamala is becoming Kamaga. Kamaga. <laughs> <laughs> that's better than. <laughs> <laughs> was it uh, uh Kamala Chameleon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Somebody's gonna I love do that a, meme. Somebody's gonna do a boy George on it, aren't they? Oh yeah, if they haven't already. I was waiting for it. I haven't seen it yet, but certainly somebody's done that already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, spread this like wildfire, honestly. Right. <laughs> Light this at every turn. Well, it's a great opportunity because it's you, you, true. But, but I would look at it because we play campaign managers all the time. Look, I was uh, we started off the show being critical of the the, the Trump campaign uh, coming out on on Sunday uh, and uh, telling the Epic Times that uh, well, if Kamala doesn't agree to uh, more than one debate, the one she's agreed to. Well, then Trump's going to do a town hall. And we said, no, no, what are you doing? No, don't do that. No. What are you doing? Don't do that. No. Put the pressure on. Put the pressure on big time. I mean, you spent all this time contacting the networks, getting getting them to agree to it and everything else. And three or four days later or five days later, you're saying, no, chuck it. No. No, no, no. Use this thing against her and pound it. Take every advantage that you can in messaging and so last hour, Eric and I were just having fun, and and all of a sudden we went, oh, my gosh, wait a minute. No, we, I mean, it was a wake-up, really. It was it was sort of a wake-up call a going, well, wait a minute. No, we, we can – don't call them li- – don't call them liars. Hold They've it. embraced it. Hold it. They've the, the Democratic Party has embraced the pro-Trump MAGA agenda here, and Kamala Harris is the leader in promoting – the pro MAGA agenda. I mean, I would pound this yep. as we have over the last hour to uh, quite uh, looks like uh, popular support. Man, if I were on one of the Sunday shows, you know, but Kamala has been called a liar. That no, you're right. That's wrong. That's wrong. Kamala has embraced the pro Trump MAGA agenda. She's not lying. She's coming together as Donald Trump, the great uniter. Only Donald Trump, the great uniter, can do. In recent weeks, the turn has been very clear. With Biden out of the way, Biden was not willing to be a uniter. Kamala Harris is willing to go along with the great uniter, Donald Trump, on these major tenets and more. There's no denying it. She's pro-fracking. She's pro-secure border. You can't, she's pro-no taxing tips. She agrees with Donald Trump and the pro-Trump MAGA agenda. Full stop. 
because otherwise you have to call her a liar, liberal media. Or Kamega. Yeah. Kamaga. Kamaga. Kamaga Harris. Kamaga Harris. Get that out there now. Oh, my gosh. Kamaga Harris. Kamaga Harris. Yeah. All right. I think the word's out. There you go. You know what to do, people. Yeah, you could even headline when you retweet it. Kamaga, Kamaga Harris. Kamaga Harris. Make it happen. Make sure you capitalize the MAGA at yep, the end. It's exactly. M-A-G-A needs to be capitalized. Yeah. Not the K-A. Yeah, though the right. K does. K, lowercase a, a, capital M, capital A, capital G, capital A. We don't take talking points. We write them. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's because otherwise, liberal media, you have to call her a liar for changing her position. Uh, no, that's that's it right there. Play the game. Play the game. Okay, she hasn't. Pre- play the game. Make the Democrats call Harris a liar. Yeah, she's. Listen. Either call her a liar or she's embraced the pro-Trump MAGA agenda. Yeah. One or the other, which is it, Democrats? And we think it's wrong that you call her. <laughs> right. We think it's terrible that you call her a liar. That's right. How dare you How call dare her? you do right. that? Stop that misogyny now. Stop it. You're just, you're calling her, wow. No. You're calling her a liar? That's racist and misogynist. That's right. Have you no shame? <laughs> Have you no shame? <laughs> Because it's one or the other. You know, this is better than sitting right right now. The last about hour of the show mm-hmm. is this is what I imagine it would be like if I worked for the Babylon Bee. Oh, Sitting here man. just throwing yeah, out. Because we started this completely. Every day. We were on a serious yeah. conversation. All of a sudden, this hit going, well, wait a minute. Let, let's let's not call her a liar. Let's Let's say she's telling the truth. She's embraced let, let, the pro-Trump MAGA agenda. Let, let, let's take her at her word. Yep. What does this mean? Right. Kamala Harris is now MAGA. That's right. Kamaga Harris. Kamaga. Somebody, somebody's got that down. Kamaga. <laughs> and make they, it happen, people. <laughs> make it happen. And Harris. Hashtag Kamaga. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is. Kamega Harris. Hashtag mm-hmm. Kamega Harris. I yep. like that. Wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Even, Go with that. Yeah. Tag Hashtag that Kamega Harris. Yeah. Go. Make it happen. Thank you for being our willing surrogates here. <laughs> that's right. If you care about the future of this country, make it happen. Our retweeters are our re-Xers. That's right. And. To be clear, we don't monetize at all off of X or anything like that. So No, we're not making any money no. off this. No. <laughs> Just so you know. No. Like... <laughs> I give diddling and squat about credit for it. Just do it. Just make it happen. Damn, we didn't make any money off it. <laughs> we didn't think about right. that. I know. We were so I know. We were so excited about the idea. <laughs> right. All right. You've got your marching orders. Go. Go, people. If you love red eye, you'll do this. <laughs> If you love America if you love and America. Red Eye, children and puppies you, and kittens, you'll do this. If you don't re-exit, what do you call it now? Repost. Not re- repost. You got, if you don't oh, repost come on, it. Repost, you know, that's that's come what they on. call it. Oh. If you don't repost it. You're a commie. You're anti-America. You're anti- <laughs> you, you hate America. If you don't repost it, you hate MAGA. That's right. And America. That's right. All of it. And pancakes. You hate pancakes, too. And nobody hates pancakes. Of course we... We hate pancakes at the end, right? And the last three or four bites, it's like, oh, when the syrup kicks in. Yeah. But no, I think it's uh, it's really good because even the over-the-top rhetoric that we have now, really, there's a great message here. It's about how you, you know, how you attack somebody when, you know, campaign, when they start flip-flopping completely. I and this is, this is... Yeah, yeah, I didn't set her campaign on this 180... I mean, this seriously. The Titanic may still be uh, on on uh, uh, running back and forth on top of the water 
if they had been able to turn away from the iceberg this fast. The way she pivoted. I know. Is virtually impossible. Until you understand what's going on. And that is the great unifier, the great uniter, Donald Trump, bringing America together, including Kamala Harris. She agrees with the pro-Trump MAGA agenda. I got another one. Hmm? Harris, Project 25. (laughs) (laughs) Project 2025. <laughs> we'll work on that one. <laughs> All right. We got a hell of a lot of work to do today. We do. 86690 Red Eye. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howes Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. In the southeast and mid-Atlantic states this past week, the big story was, of course, Hurricane Debbie. It did cause quite a lot of wind and flood damage. But for agriculture along Debbie's path, that storm was not as damaging as it might have been. USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey told us. That storm took a favorable track, mostly between key ag areas. So, for example, we didn't see any major impacts in Florida's citrus areas. And at the same time, the core of the storm stayed east of a lot of the key southeastern production areas from Georgia into the Carolinas. Now, Brad is not downplaying the problems Debbie caused, but he says considering how much agricultural havoc that storm might have created. We did make it through in relatively good shape. Relatively. Gary Crawford reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Lubes. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. You know, you had mentioned this uh, earlier, and it was uh, covered in depth yesterday on Fox. Uh, Harris's campaign posted the debunked claim that former President Trump said there were very fine people on both sides of the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally in 2017. Seven years ago today, white supremacist and neo-Nazis marched in Charlottesville chanting racist and anti-Semitic bile and killing an innocent woman. This is who Donald Trump calls very fine people. The Kamala HQ account posted on X along with a uh, a video. As we know, that's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. And uh, you, again, have to take everything out of context. Uh, It's what the left has had to do uh, all along. You know, it was one thing uh, looking at uh, actor Michael Rappaport. uh, And when he, it was interesting when he, started to make the turn on on things that the left was throwing out. And then he went back and recently said, I went back and looked at the things that they said about Trump. And one of those things was Charlottesville. He said it was a lie. It took him all these years to do his homework, but he did it. And he... He came around. I don't know if he's, you know, pro MAGA completely yet because, you know, he not too long ago, he still wasn't a fan of Donald Trump, but there was no way he was going to vote for Biden. And there's no way he's going to vote for Kamala Harris. And so he's he's implied that he's going to vote for for Trump. When you start learning the truth, uh, you have to ask yourself if you're a Democrat. Number one, if you care about the truth. And if you do, what do you actually know? Is it things that other people have told you? Things the media has repeated? How much homework have you done? You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. 
And he is Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome and good morning. Thanks so much for being here. Download our Red Eye Radio app today and you can uh, listen when you choose. I have not heard Trump talk about tariffs in a while. It's been a minute. And, you know, in fact, I think the last talk I heard from his campaign at all was a mention of it by J.D. Vance. And that goes that goes back uh, two or three weeks at least. And and the reason I bring it up, this uh, this polling came up uh, about a week ago, and I wonder if they got internal polling on it. Hmm. You and I had said from the very beginning when Trump was talking about a 10 percent across the board tariff on all products coming into the United States. And what was it? Was it 40 or 60 percent on China? We said, look, on China, we understand. But understand if you do that, that cost of goods and services will go up. And immediately you had the Trump surrogates out there saying, well, when Trump had the steel tariffs, you didn't see massive inflation. Mm -hmm. Well, the steel tariffs were minor. But what you did get out of that was was lost jobs. Yeah. As we always talked about, if you if you believe in tariffs, you protect one industry and anybody else who has to buy that product from that industry has higher costs, and somehow that's passed on. And we said the danger of Trump doing that was the fact that, number one, conservatives understand about when you increase the cost of goods and services, there is going to be economic consequences because of it. Mm -hmm. And we said to try to defend that there won't be is a losing proposition with a lot of people. Because, yeah. you know, it, if if you say we're going to do it because they're stealing our technology, that's one thing. But if you simply say across the board, all of our trading partners, we're going to raise your cost 10 percent and then they'll reciprocate back. Why would you do that? What's the point of doing it? You don't accomplish uh, anything. Well, this came out uh, last week. The Cato Institute uh, did a uh, poll national survey on uh, trade issues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm conducted by YouGov, found out uh, not a top trade issues, not a priority. Uh, Let me see. Only 1% of surveyed Americans said that globalization and international trade was a top three issue for them, the lowest any of any issue asked on the survey. Instead, far more cared about inflation, and that's what we said, 40%. Care about inflation, mm-hmm. health care, 30 percent, jobs in the economy, 28 percent, immigration, 27 percent. Uh, this pattern holds up for registered voters as well, with only one percent who identified trade as a top three issue. Two thirds of Americans say global trade is good for the U.S. economy. Fifty eight percent said it's helped raise the standard of living. Sixty three percent of the fub- public favors more trade with other nations three-fourths 75 percent are concerned about tariffs raising the prices of products they buy at the store Mm. and this is what we had warned the trump campaign we said look people are sensitive like you can't believe on inflation why would you do this right because you can't get away with saying there is no economic effect right you know and they were very very careful uh was it not navarro uh what's it lighthizer was out there talking about he goes well there was no there there was no inflation of the trump tariffs last time well that's not the question the question is is there a negative economic impact because of it right do you raise costs now again we had very low inflation and steel itself uh and for the length of time that it existed is not something that's going to cost you a trillion dollars right but and so if it increased prices it would be very slight but it was only as we know, for steel and aluminum, and as we know, Wall Street Journal laid it out, the thousands of jobs that were lost by American manufacturers that had to buy steel or aluminum to produce their products and the layoffs that occurred there. And so there's always economic consequences. And we said it's amazing that Trump is trying to promote, the campaign is trying to promote, that there aren't economic consequences to raising the cost of doing business. You can't sell that to people. You can sell that, yeah, it's justified because China is cheating and stealing our technology. Mm-hmm. But you can't do the rest of it and say, well, just in general, we need to raise the cost to protect industries here in the United States. Right. Uh, this is interesting here. And, and we have said people are extremely 
price sensitive right now. They're always price sensitive, but this was interesting. Three, four, 75% concerned about tariffs raising the price of uh, products they buy at the store. Two thirds, 66% of Americans would oppose paying even $10 more for a pair of blue jeans due to tariffs, even if they were told the $10 was intended to help uh, the manufacturing base in the United States. But so I wonder if that's why they may have talked about it, but I don't hear the frequency at all. He was leading with it two months ago. No, it was everywhere. And it it seemed to come to a close. Internals will do that. If it's having a negative effect, especially on people in, that haven't made a decision on you one way or the other, his base will go along with it, and they were out and, you know, didn't have a, a concern with that at all. The polls showed that. But if you have more and more people looking at it and they're asked directly what they think about that, the closer you get to the election, the more it's going to negatively affect you if you're promoting that. And there's no way around it. Look, you're not going to get a long-term 10% across the board tariff. That's not going to happen long-term. Because at some point, you're going to have to pull the plug on it and get back to the economy. It's We've seen it happen repeatedly with steel tariffs. If you went across the board, that would be even more short-lived. And so the question would be, then why do you promote it? Now, the idea that you want to promote manufacturing, more manufacturing in the United States, isn't a bad idea. The question is, how do you get that done? Ooh, you, you want to promote ooh, that, ooh. then you can promote that all day long. I was raising my hand. Mm-hmm. The Texas model. Yes. Right. Look at the huge export states mm-hmm. like Texas. Right. You notice the state of Texas isn't calling for tariffs. No. To protect anything. No. Why? Because companies are coming here to do business. You can attract them with a lower tax base, lower regulation, and we can do this as a nation, a greater energy plan, which means cheap and plentiful energy. But it has to be a long-term plan. It can't be just an administrative move. It's going to have to be... It's going to have to come from Capitol Hill. We have to have a long-term, uh, plentiful, cheap energy plan in the United States, and that has to be in stone to tell companies this so that they can actually make an investment that goes beyond every four years at turning around. They know this. An administrative move is short-lived because the opposite party comes in, they're going to change it right back. We actually saw that within a matter of months, on in situ conversion. In the summer of 2008, oil was at $147 a barrel, the highest it's ever been. The Bush administration, in their last few months, okayed administratively the exploration and drilling for and production for in situ conversion. And that was going to happen until, in March of 2009, the incoming, and still new, it wasn't incoming, but by then, it, but it was a new administration, the Obama administration, put a halt to it. So within a matter of eight, nine months, that turnaround, you can't make an investment like that. You won't invest, companies won't invest long term until we have a solid energy plan, period. And it's not wind and solar. It's oil and natural gas. You know, and, and uh, that's, uh, and I'll say this, you know, I, I, I've loved the, uh, the media covering. Well, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, Trump and uh, Elon Musk, and he supports them. And there were a lot of softball questions. Mm-hmm. Well, she won't even take softball questions. Right. She won't even, go, <laughs> no, that's, you know, because somebody said, and, and Elon uh, last night was, I don't know, uh, about 20, 30 minutes before we went on. He posted on X that he welcomes her for a sit down mm-hmm. on the same chat uh, forum and uh, platform. And, and they and, you know, of course, they're never going to do that. It was 
It was it was well over a couple of hours long. She's not going to do that. And she won't do that for a few minutes in a pre-recorded, editable form with the liberal media. And you can tell that, as I've said, uh, I didn't get a chance because it's three hours long, so I didn't get a chance to listen to it. I'm sleeping at that mm-hmm. time when it was on, mm-hmm. and so I've only caught bits and pieces of it, but I've read a lot of the different uh, transcripts of what was said a lot of the quotes, they discussed energy policy, this from Fox Business, mm. and Trump criticized President Biden for his decision to block the Keystone XL pipeline that would have run from Alberta, Canada to Nebraska. One of the first things he did is that he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline, which is our pipeline that would have employed 48,000 people, pipeline workers. He shuts it down. Mm-hmm. That was a massive job that Obama refused to allow to be shut down. I allowed it in my first week because it was jobs and it moved oil. And by the way, in a much more environmentally friendly way, it's underground. It's not a truck that catches on fire or a train that catches on fire. Trump is 100% right there. We have to bring energy prices down. The price of gasoline, Trump told Musk, the CEO of yeah, Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Now, your cars don't require too much gasoline, and you do make a great product, I have to say. But I, but I have to be honest with you, that doesn't mean everybody should have an electric car but these are minor details. The cost of, by the way, they're not minor details. I'll disagree there because of the subsidies. If there's no subsidies, taxpayer subsidies, it is a minor detail. You can produce whatever the heck you want. Right. The cost of energy, quote, the cost of energy, not only gasoline, it's a cost of heating your house, cooling your house. It has to come down. It has to come down. Uh, and we're going to drill, baby, drill. Yep. Musk noted that why he's a proponent of EVs. And clean energy technology. He doesn't believe in vilifying the oil and gas industry and said he thinks it's probably better that the U.S. provides that than some other countries and it would help with the prosperity in the United States. Oil and natural gas isn't going away in our lifetime, period. The question is, how much do we want to pay for it? Oh, man, did you catch Newsom Mm. yesterday? He was asked a specific question. Did I save that? If not, I'll have it. I think I, I think I may have bookmarked it somewhere. Oh. Uh. Basically saying that California. Here it is. I've got it. You ready? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Do we have time? All right. Yeah, we got time. Here we go. All right. Here we go. All right. Newsom. Yeah. And as far as on the energy topic, I live in Woodland, and I'm actually a customer of Valley Clean Energy. And I can tell you my power bills have not gone down. <laughs> And I'm curious, when should California see some financial benefit to this transformation to renewables? Well, I think we have. Um, That wind, uh, the water, and solar has kept prices uh, down. This is the cheapest form of energy right out here, this technology. It's had a significant impact on what you don't see. Um, Our nation-leading climate policies have also had a significant impact of rebating customers, including $146 just this month that will be going out on average to customers, millions and millions of customers through our cap and trade program to offset their utility costs. Our nation leading energy efficiency program allows me to lay claim to this fact. It's been PolitiFact. You can check it as well. So the fact that California has lower uh, residential utility bills than states like Texas, states like Florida. That's a lie. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie, and that was fact-checked immediately through what? The Energy Department yep. and their statistics. California average kilowatt per hour, 34 cents. Florida, 13 cents. Texas, 14 cents. And I know, because I just renewed last year for three years for a total of 13.9 cents per kilowatt hour mm-hmm. for three years total cost mm-hmm. after taxes and everything. Absolute lie. But California, you suck up the lies. Yep. Every single day. Right. Absolute lie from the governor of California. Yep. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio. Toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Friday Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. Remember, uh, as uh, we uh, reposted uh, we posted earlier uh, uh, today, 
and this happened in an organic way when we were talking about, uh, you know, what, uh, how, how you can unite the country on the, the issues. And yeah. we started talking about the no labels party. And then we realized Trump is the great uniter because Kamala Harris is now pro Trump MAGA on the issues. Yeah. She has embraced a secure border. She is pro fat, uh, fracking. Mm-hmm. She now agrees uh, with uh, Trump on not taxing tips. Yep. Yep. He's uniting the country through Kamala Harris and her pro Trump MAGA opinions now. It's a miracle. A miracle. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.